everybody welcome to a new show from wicked good everything influencer chat in this podcast we'll be reviewing the u.s version of the circle on netflix we're your hosts brian and ben ben i'm so excited to be talking about the circle you've been hyping this up for months honestly and i have to say after these first four episodes i can see why you were so excited yeah, I'm, uh, I'm very excited to talk about this. Uh, the Circle is like one of my favorite things to, that I discovered uh, in 2019, the UK version. And ever since I had heard that there was going to be uh, a US version of the show, uh, I was like on the edge of my seat waiting <laughs> for it to come. And then uh, it turned out that it was coming on January 1st, which was way sooner than I expected it to. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I'm very, uh, very pleased so far with, uh, the first four episodes and, uh, can't wait to talk about them. So take me back a little bit. So the people who might want to know you in real life and to know you through the channel, know that you're a big reality competition fan, obviously an expert, a big brother and survivor. How did you find the UK version of the circle? Uh, so about maybe like September ish of last year. Uh, right around when uh, Series 2 or Season 2 of the UK version started coming out, uh, there was uh, some people online through like Reddit and Twitter, uh, Twitter especially, who like uh, some mostly Americans uh, who kind of discovered the show mm-hmm. and started talking about it. Uh, and at that point, um, you know, I kind of had heard the like concept of what it was. It sounded interesting. So I went and I found uh, some uh, links for season one and season two of the show. Mm -hmm. Uh, I basically like ripped through them uh, in like two or three weeks. Uh, Well, I I started, uh, I ripped through like all of the available episodes in like two-ish weeks. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I I caught up to season two as it was airing uh, live in like the last uh four or five episodes that it was airing and so i was able to like kind of watch that uh as it came out mm-hmm. uh and yeah i'm uh, i've been waiting for uh for the u.s version to come out ever since so this is kind of a phenomenon almost through the uh reality tv fan community would you, would you say yeah this is uh i think this, this kind of happens sometimes uh where like especially the like ravenous online U.S., most primarily U.S. audience Mm -hmm. of shows like Big Brother and Survivor uh, can kind of find these uh, like niche foreign shows uh, and everyone kind of just gets obsessed about them. Mm -hmm. Uh, And this happened like uh, with The Genius a couple of years ago, which is a Korean uh, competition reality show. Mm -hmm. Uh, which I also went and I watched every episode of when that got big and is also very good. Yeah. Uh, I wish they would make a U.S. version of that. <laughs> I was going to say, I think they really missed an opportunity. There was a moment there where if there had been a U.S. version of The Genius, I do feel like it could have been enormous. Yeah, absolutely. Especially, I mean, even even though it is kind of a, a more uh, like complex and intellectual game and show, Mm-hmm. Uh, and I know that in the past with shows like The Mole, for instance, mm-hmm. uh, there's been a struggle for there to be a consistent U.S. market for like that kind of uh, uh, like Thinking Man show. Right. Uh, but I think that, you know, as reality TV and competition, reality TV especially, has developed over the years, there's definitely a, an opportunity to, to try something like that again. Yeah. All right. So I guess without further ado... What did you think of these first four episodes that Netflix released? Uh, I love it. I love this cast. The mm-hmm. format is is basically the same. Like it's basically just a third version of the UK uh, show, but with Americans instead of uh, Brits. Um, so I'm uh, very very happy. I think the cast honestly uh, is like the strongest overall cast. Mm-hmm. Um, compared to both of the UK seasons, there really aren't any duds, I would say, uh, at least right. so far. Because uh, there might be, you know, uh, two or so, two or three more people who end up coming in by the end of the season. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, what do you think so far? This is your first experience uh, with the circle, other than like me telling you to watch the UK version for like right. four months straight. <laughs> um, so I do like it quite a bit. Um, the format, in terms of 
how it's releasing is kind of odd the, the four episodes a week all on one day but uh you know i watch those in two days and i'm i'm ready to watch more i i can't wait for it to come out i think like you said the cast is very good i do have um a couple of questions that you answered offline but maybe people listening to this who are newer to the circle discovered it on netflix might want the answers to how uh does the format work with this show so we started off with eight players two have been eliminated in these four episodes but they've been replaced how many people do you think are going to come in and then ultimately how do we get a winner for the circle sure uh so we kind of seen so far we've seen like two rounds of play happen uh and that'll basically be the like standard way that a round of the circle is played where you mm. have the ratings are done the ratings are revealed the influencers are selected and the influencers select somebody to block yeah um uh and that's kind of like the general format there are twists that can happen throughout the game mm. where sometimes there's like only one influencer they're like called a super super influencer for that right. round sometimes uh at the start of the round uh people are told that instead of the uh there being influencers that round the lowest ranked person will just be eliminated uh immediately oh wow okay. uh, so um but uh to answer the to two major questions you asked uh with people being replaced that's kind of a thing that's relatively common on uh uk reality shows especially mm -hmm. it's something that happens on uh uk big brother uh especially and uh yeah. something that they've continued into this show mm -hmm. um and uh i think it's it's okay it does have i think pros and cons uh mm -hmm. where uh you have a smaller cast at any given time but you still are able to like kind of drag out the season for uh quite a while so you right. have issues with those like big brother and survivor where the cast is so big you can't really get to know everybody mm -hmm. Um, so how that'll work is maybe about 60 to 65% of the way through the season. So maybe after like episode seven or eight, mm -hmm. um, we'll have them lock it down and say no one else new is coming in. Okay. And at that point, the, the cast will actually start to diminish from eight to seven to six to five. Mm -hmm. Um, and once it gets down to either four or five players, uh, so season one of the British show had a final four and season two had a final five. Mm -hmm um those players will do one final ranking and the person who is ranked number one in that final ranking will be the winner of the show all right so we won't be seeing these eliminated players anymore they, there's not a jury like some of the bigger reality shows in the u.s um big brother yeah. survivors specifically um what did you think of these first two players eliminated I guess we had a day one elimination, at least it seemed to yep. be right, Alana. Yeah, I believe that was I believe that was night one. Yeah. So, um, what do you think of Alana's elimination? Uh, I thought I think I think I saw it coming pretty uh, early on. Uh, it was I think it was relatively telegraphed. Uh, mm -hmm. Like she was shown making the most like clear and obvious social mistakes. Right. Um, yeah. I Though she was that, like, third in the voting she, she was, almost that was, was an influencer the, that that would have been pretty crazy if uh she'd become an influencer off of the uh first impression vote and then like people then kind of started to dislike her afterwards mm -hmm. uh i actually think also with antonio as somebody who was an initial first influencer uh being somebody who's kind of like a uh, like a strat head game bot kind of guy mm -hmm. uh, he was talking very heavily in the influ influencer chat with Sammy about uh, wanting to eliminate somebody who's a threat and especially like referencing those first impression rankings yeah so I think that maybe the fact that she came in third uh, was something that Antonio saw as threatening yeah no that makes a lot of sense obviously with uh, Antonio who actually will be our second person eliminated um coming up later in the fourth episode um wanting to re get rid of a threat what do you think of being an influencer this early obviously we saw how it affected antonio's game at least he felt like people judged him 
because of his high social ranking at first. And then conversely, we have people like Shubom, who uh, was very low. I think he was last in the first impressions one. And now he's seemingly in a really great place where people like him quite a bit. And he was an influencer in the second round of the game. Yeah, it's definitely uh, like a double-edged sword. Uh, I think that Antonio kind of uh, correctly pointed that out uh, mm. and then like proceeded to still play it wrong. Uh, <laughs> and, like get influencer-itis a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, it's, it's, I think there's like, a difference between how the UK version has gone in its two seasons versus how this is going so far, where in the UK version there has been, uh, in both seasons... Uh, a lot of repeat influencers, uh, a lot of people being influencer for multiple rounds in a row, mm-hmm. uh, or like the rankings not changing dramatically from round to round. Right. Uh, whereas here in the first two rounds, we've seen uh, people like go from first to last, last to first. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that could be a trend that continues. So maybe in this version, it is less uh, good to be an influencer this early. Uh, and I think that uh, we can talk about what that would mean for our two influencers of the second round, Chris and Shubham, mm-hmm. uh, going down the road. Do you think um, it's possible maybe some of these people who applied to be on the circle and got on are maybe more fans of the more competitive U.S. reality shows than, like, you know, Big Brother in Great Britain isn't... It's still a game, but it's way more based on the public voting rather than the players playing the game. So there's more of a intensity being brought to the strategic element of the game. No, right. Absolutely. I agree with that. Uh, I think that uh, this was even seen uh, in like the fan base uh, surrounding like the fan base reaction to the UK show Mm -hmm. uh, where like the UK audience uh, was very uh, like aggressive and, angry and uh you know disliking the uh players uh, mm-hmm. especially on season two who were playing strategically and playing uh kind of more cutthroat mm-hmm. uh whereas the u.s audience uh generally had more like respect for them and like understanding that they were just trying to play the game to win uh, and i think a lot of that does come down to like the the culture and the like other shows that uh both the like the countries have been exposed to in the past Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I think it shows, too, that a lot of these players are here to aggressively play the game and do what they can to advance themselves. Um, all right, so with Alana gone, we actually had a new person come in. I guess let's I'll run down just all the names, because obviously if you're, if you're watching this, you know the cast. I, I doubt heavily that you'd be searching out a Circle podcast if you didn't watch the episodes, but uh, of course we have Chris, Joey, Alana, Rebecca, uh, Shubham, uh, Samantha, Antonio, uh, Mercedes, Miranda, and Alex. And then Mercedes is actually uh, Karen, and Rebecca is actually Seaburn in real life, and they are catfishing. Um, mm-hmm. Alex is also catfishing, and he'll be playing uh, as a man named Adam. Correct. So, let's see. Alana was taken out, and we got Miranda in her place. What was the vibe uh, you had on Miranda? Uh, Miranda is very interesting. I think that uh, we saw a number of instances where she kind of put her foot in her mouth, mm-hmm. uh, especially with regards to uh, to Sammy. Yes. Um, yeah, and I think that she's trying really, really hard to uh, like manufacture the way that she's coming off rather than mm-hmm. being more of her like authentic self. Mm-hmm. Like, I think she's very much in her own head. I don't know. What do you, what do you think about uh, Miranda? I think she, she came in real hot. Like, um, I don't know if that was the pressure of being a replacement player and coming into an existing social dynamic and not knowing how to ingratiate yourself, especially where, you know, she only got to talk to one person at first, and then she got to talk to everybody. Um, but she was extremely flirty um, to both the guys and the girls. And I felt 
that that's a double-edged sword. Obviously, it worked for people like Joey. But uh, as you said, Sammy did not really appreciate that. Yeah, I think that it's it's interesting with Miranda. I think she knows the ways that she could be like misconstrued or like uh like the way that people might uh view some of the things she says but she doesn't really use that knowledge like that that self-reflection to make different decisions with the way that she initiates conversations um but yeah so I, I think that the up until her really good conversation with joey in episode four uh, I was feeling like very worried that uh, Miranda would just be like revolving door, um, especially when you talk to when you hear uh, Shuby, for instance, reference the fact that like uh, he wants like Miranda out, you know, whatever in the next round, and Shuby is somebody who seems to have a pretty solid uh, like social control right now. <clears throat> yeah, so I'm uh, obviously not terribly familiar with a format that involves people coming in after the start of the game outside of like uh, day one like Bert, Paul and BB19 um but I did watch Big Brother Canada where two people came in late and it did not go very well for them at all um is that kind of a common thing or as we discuss maybe since the British um, players are more used to that format. Was it not a big deal in the other existing seasons of the circle? No, I definitely think there is a uh, serious um, uh, negative perception of people who come in late uh, in terms of just like the fact that the social dynamics have already kind of been laid and somebody new coming in is going to have to work extra hard to try and break into that existing social structure. And in both seasons of the circle, I think that uh, the, the the replacement players uh, struggled on average more than the initial players. Um, I think that the the later you come in, the harder it also then becomes. So like Miranda of the replacement players is going to have the easiest time to try and break in. Um, and like if there was... If I had to like say, obviously we only know like one and a half replacement players at this point. We know Miranda and we know uh, this new Alex guy like very briefly. Um, there's probably going to be like two or three more maybe. Uh, so like I, I doubt that any replacement player except for Miranda really has like a legitimate shot to win. Um, yeah, because she can't. Because what did she come in on day two? It's hard to keep track. This is not like a day counter yeah i think it was the night of day two because they were doing the party right so she came in the night of day two she talked to mercedes on the night of day two mm. and then she talked to everybody else the morning of day three right so day th day two night two day three um which isn't crazy but i mean in any of these kind of social games it, it's incredibly tough to ingratiate yourself like we see on survivor people just stick with players oftentimes just because on day one they were assigned you know the same buff color you know even if they don't necessarily like them as much as perhaps a new person that they meet at a swap so it's always an uphill battle with that kind of a thing um so i in the second round of influencer voting we saw chris who i think is playing a very good game and Shubham, who I also think is playing a very good game, um, be named Influencers and the Eliminated Antonio. What are your thoughts on that, and how do you think that's going to affect them going forward? Yeah, I think that this was probably the uh, the correct decision for the two of them. Uh, it seemed like uh, Antonio started out really strong strong in episode one uh but then he started making a lot of mistakes and kind of making enemies mm -hmm. and he didn't really do a very good job of maintaining relationships uh that he had already like kind of set the groundwork for mm -hmm. uh he you know uh doesn't really come off as uh authentic in the way that he like has conversations with people right uh especially like uh for instance his conversation with uh, Mercedes um, 
And on top of that, uh, like I mentioned, he doesn't really like follow up on relationships. Like he uh, made an early bond with Shuby, and I think that that relationship ended up kind of being one-sided yep. because Antonio didn't really put the work in to like continue to like form a bond any further with Shuby. And in that time, Shuby had formed a bond with Joey, he had formed a bond with Sammy, he had formed mm-hmm. a bond with Chris. Um, so uh, yeah, I think that it was definitely the correct decision. And what we kind of see uh, often is like each influencer kind of like protects their favorite and then they kind of just discuss among the rest. And so uh, um, they kind of both were okay with protecting Joey. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mercedes was protected by Chris. Rebecca was protected by Shuby. Yep. And then between Sammy and Antonio, Antonio had been not really putting the work in with either of the two influencers, whereas Sammy uh, did at the very least reach out to, uh, or have a conversation. I think Shuby actually reached out to her, yeah, but they had a nice right. conversation where uh, Sammy had opened up to him right before the, the blocking happened. Right. So, of course, we get to see um, Antonio uh, meet up with Mercedes and find out that Mercedes is catfishing the house. And this is something I really, really, really did not like about it was he had to say in his goodbye message that he met a catfish. And Karen was able to spin this to her advantage, but I don't love the idea of eliminated players having, um, you know, an impact on the game. What did you think of that? Yeah, I think this is, it's not like super common. I don't think any time in the UK version where didn't uh, an eliminated player ever come out and say something this uh, like blatant mm-hmm. in their goodbye video. Um, so yeah, I'm also not like a super fan of that. Like I do like the goodbye video as long as they're mm-hmm. uh, they're like more about you know the player's experience and like saying actually like talking about uh, you know saying goodbye and not uh, giving any uh, information that they otherwise shouldn't have uh, from the uh, visit they had just done. So that yeah. does that is pretty bad. And the visits are. Uh, some of the best scenes in the, the mm-hmm. show, in my opinion, especially when they're uh, a catfish involved. Yeah, it, it, it the visit itself was great. They both were pretty good. Um, but yeah, I just I don't know. That rubbed me the wrong way, and I'm I'm glad Karen was able to adjust. Um, because she seems like she's a good player, but uh, I didn't feel like that was a fair thing that the show allowed. So I just wanted to make sure I aired that grievance. Um, so who do you think's in a good position moving forward and then we'll talk a little bit about this new cast member we got at the very end of episode four yeah it's actually very difficult uh especially with this cast uh i think they're they're all like especially the the six original players uh the, the difference between the best player and the worst player out of those six uh excluding miranda I think is very, uh, very minimal. Right. And especially with the way the end game works out, um, it's kind of just a matter of like surviving and then kind of being uh, seen as non-threatening. So I think the the, the most uh, like useful qualities to have are like authenticity, like other than like ability, like mm-hmm. ability, authenticity, and uh, like coming off as non-threatening. Uh, so right now I think that Sammy is actually uh, doing pretty good. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that a lot of people, like, I don't think that she's really on anyone's radar to immediately target. We saw mm-hmm. Mercedes uh, kind of try and deflect uh, some stuff onto Rebecca. It seems like the uh, Mercedes side of things uh, is going to try and target Rebecca next. Whereas I think that uh, Shuby and uh, like, his zone of influence is going to try and go after Chris next. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'm not like super in, uh, into trying to say that Chris or Rebecca are necessarily in the perfect places in a right. game about survivability. Um, and I think that towards the end of the game, uh, I think that Shuby has a really good chance of getting into the end game, but I don't know how good he has a chance of winning a final ranking mm-hmm. when he is so like, 
uh, seemingly universally likable, at least right now. Right. So I think the people I'm looking at uh, as potential winners are Sammy mm-hmm. and then maybe like a Mercedes or a Joey as mm-hmm. like a 2 3. Yeah. No, I think, I think Mercedes is playing excellent. Karen Mercedes. Um, I think she's playing really well. I do think Shuby is playing the best he can. <clears throat> He's a bit of a dangerous uh, wild card to win, you know, because there's a lot of. Um, history with the nerdy likable archetype on these shows but not in this particular show being the first u.s season so that's interesting um whereas sometimes it can get people targeted as threats it'll be interesting to see if that holds true as we get closer to the end game you know kind of like oh he's so smart and so nice he's gonna win we need to get rid of him that for that reason you know Mm -hmm. and then uh I think this was the biggest um, point of potential danger for Sammy. I thought this last elimination was one where potentially she could go just coming off of being one of the first influencers. But now that she survived that, I do agree that I think she's in a solid spot. And while I don't think Joey can win, I didn't want to give him a shout out because uh, I thought he was going to be awful at this game. (laughs) But he seems to be doing all right. And uh, Chris is my favorite just from pure entertainment point of view. Yeah, I mean, Joey, I'm, I'm actually surprised you don't think that Joey can win. Um, uh, I also thought that Joey was going to be, like, not just, like, And it might just be TV. my initial bias, too. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. No, I, I had the exact same initial bias where I was like, oh, there's no way this guy is going to win. He's, like, mm-hmm. such a meathead. Right. Uh, but he, he comes off as really authentic. I think a lot of people, like, really are, like, personally drawn to him in a lot of ways. Mm-hmm. Um, I, yeah, I, I don't think he's, like, so stupid that he's going to, like, screw himself up. Like, he right, did make right. uh, mistakes, but those mistakes ended up not mattering because a lot of them had to do with, like, like he made mistakes in the way he dealt with Antonio, but Antonio is gone now. Yeah, so it right. Really matter anymore. <laughs> yeah, uh, so and like he felt he, really he bad about that. Like that. <laughs> yeah, if he continues to make mistakes like that, then yeah, it's not like super great. Um, but I think that there definitely is a world where Joey wins. All right, cool. Well, yeah, like I said, you know more than I do for this show, but I'm I'm loving it, man. I I'm really hyped. We don't have any Celebrity Big Brother to cover this winter which is disappointing but i do feel like the circle can fill that hole in my heart between survivor seasons you know yeah especially you know when it's it's relatively short and the survivor season coming up uh is actually pretty soon after so yeah um yeah so very excited let's uh touch a little bit on the very end of the last episode where we got Alex playing as Adam coming into the game. What are your initial thoughts? I know we didn't see too much of him, so there might not be a lot, but just your general first impression. I mean, I've seen enough. Uh, <laughs> I, I, uh, there is like a hundred percent no way that this works at all. Like he is going to mm-hmm. get found out so fast. Uh, this is like that. This might be the like one of the worst ideas. Uh, that somebody's ever had coming into this sh- uh, this show on like every season, playing um, as a hot guy. When you're yeah, I, the, I mean, there's just like being a catfish is very difficult. Mm-hmm. It's way more difficult than anyone thinks it is. You have to have really put in an enormous amount of uh, like legwork ahead of time in order to like create a character and a story that you can actually build a personality on top of. Right. Uh, and you need to have the research to be able to like uh, prove that you are the person that you're like putting forward. Mm-hmm. So like if you're putting forward that you're like this uh, like kind of like model bro guy, you right. have to have the knowledge that somebody like that would be expected to have. Mm-hmm. And if you haven't lived a life like that, if that's not your real personality, then that's that's something that's going to come out very fast. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that uh, I think that's going to happen. I think he's probably going to be like immediately pegged as a catfish within 24 hours. <laughs> well, especially um, where two people have been eliminated and neither of them have been a catfish. I think right, that's yeah. going to amp it up even more because we saw Antonio try to plant the seasons 
it blow up right in his face. But now uh, that he's been revealed as also authentic, I think the paranoia is going to really start to set in. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that this actually brings up an important point um, where I think a lot of the players and like the show in general within the edit uh, really puts a lot of emphasis on discovering who is catfishing. Mm -hmm. Um, when I think that's actually a relatively minor part of the game and the show. Yeah. Um, because, like, yes, if you're catfishing, that kind of says something about uh, your, like, deviousness, maybe, or, like, your uh, willingness to, to, like, be dishonest or, like, deceptive. Mm -hmm. uh, but, like, otherwise, like, there's no bonus for discovering who a catfish is. There's right. no, like advantage for eliminating a catfish versus a normal player mm. like it, it's it's better for you if there is a catfish in the game who has your back yeah. rather than a real person who doesn't have your back um so i i think there is an overemphasis on discovering uh who the catfish are but with mm. that being said i still think that uh that it's a really uh, bad idea to like be a catfish and not mm. be able to pull it off which i i have no faith at all that <laughs> alex is gonna be off. right no i think that's a good point on both fronts is there anything else you'd like to add before we wrap this first episode up of influencer chat mm, no nothing else i'm i'm very excited uh we're uh you know we're, we only have basically like there's only going to be three episodes of this podcast because it's only a three-week mm. event. So, like, you know, I'm, uh, I'm very excited to get into the, the next batch of episodes here. And by the time we chat next, the show will be more than halfway over. Yeah, I mean, I'm excited to, and maybe we can see uh, if we can do interviews or something. I don't know how big this is going to be. I don't know if it's, like, as clamped down as perhaps the CBS reality shows are and as difficult to get interviews afterwards but uh we'll look into stuff like that and we'll we'll look into potentially covering the uk seasons too as we go forward if people enjoy this podcast yeah or the uh the french or the brazilian version which uh should also come out hopefully with subtitles it's gonna be real hard if not it's gonna be difficult yeah. <laughs> to cover <laughs> Even with even with subtitles, it's going to be difficult. Yes, no, definitely. So much is based on people's on like text, inflection yeah. and yep. uh, reactions, yep. and perhaps you know the Brazilian and French culture have different tells that we aren't as familiar with, being from English speaking uh, America. So we'll see. We'll see about that. But uh, Ben, I've really enjoyed this chat. I've enjoyed the episodes a lot and where can people find you online if they're looking to give you a shout and see your tweets about the circle uh you can follow me on twitter at ben sharon b-n-s-h-a-r-r-o-n pretty straightforward uh i am tweeting a lot about the uh circle mm -hmm. i gave like kind of my uh like spoiler free uh thoughts uh on the early episodes already uh, I do a lot of like retweeting of uh, like people promoting the show because mm -hmm. I want it to get big enough where it like gets a second season. I agree, I agree with <laughs> that. Um, so yeah, that's where you can find me. Awesome. You can find me on Twitter at the fake BMR. That's B M A R R. I'm talking about the circle. I'm talking about uh, memeing on World War Three. Uh, I'm you know just trying to have fun in this new year, and. Uh, yeah, you can follow the channel on Twitter at WG Everything on Instagram at Wicked Good Everything on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Wicked Good Everything. Of course, the main channel is youtube.com slash Wicked Good Everything. This channel, youtube.com slash a ton of random characters because we're not at 100 subscribers yet. But if you're listening on iTunes, search Wicked Good Podcast. You'll be able to find us that way. And if you're listening on YouTube, search Influencer Chat on iTunes or uh you know, SoundCloud, Podbean, wherever you find uh, podcasts. And we will see you next week as we discuss the next four episodes of The Circle. Thanks for listening.